Good evening, I'm Kai Jackson. And I'm Mary Bubala. Crime and violence has a tight grip on Baltimore, and tonight residents say they need change now. What we're going through in Baltimore right now is, is torture. You can't even leave out your door in the morning time and guarantee that you're going to make it back home to your family. Our children is dying. Sir, and what you doing about it? Y'all sitting what in the office about doing it? about it? I'm leaving. I'm not willing to sacrifice the life of one of my children for Baltimore City. For eight straight years, more than 300 people have been murdered in Baltimore. And five days into the new year, 14 people have already been shot and touched by gun violence. 11 of them have survived, but three, all young people, have been killed. The latest death, a 16-year-old boy in southwest Baltimore. He was shot alongside four other students yesterday afternoon at the Edmondson Village Shopping Center, just steps away from their school. Today, we learned his name is Deontay Dorsey. Two suspects got away. Now, the new year has brought changes and promise to Baltimore as well. Ivan Bates is now the city's top prosecutor, and he's vowing to turn the page in the fight against crime. In his first act, he's overturning some policies from former city state's attorney Marilyn Mosby. This evening, Bates held a town hall that he's calling Take Back Our Streets. The panel included city, state, and federal partners. Visibly absent was Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott. The panel covered a wide range of topics from guns to drugs and policy as well. Ivan Bates doubled down on his promise to be tough on crime and prosecute when necessary. The person continues to show time and time again that they don't want to follow the law, that they want to do what they want to do, and they don't want to avail themselves to these low, to the to diversionary programs. You asking to be prosecuted. The Fox 45 News has comprehensive team coverage. We're giving a voice to the residents as we hold your elected leaders accountable. We begin with Mackenzie Frost. Mackenzie is live with the takeaway from tonight's town hall. Mackenzie, a lot to unpack. Yeah, there really is a lot to unpack. Kai and Marion, for the first time under this new administration, a united front when it comes to tackling the violent crime in Baltimore. Hinging on working together, the panel tonight calling themselves the Super Bowl team. Capping a week full of inauguration events. Mr. Ivan Bates is our new state's attorney. Ivan Bates joining the U.S. Attorney for Maryland, Eric Barron, and other top law enforcement and prosecutors for a public safety town hall. On the stage for the first time together, Police Commissioner Michael Harrison, State Attorney General Anthony Brown, Bates, Barron, and Inspector General Isabel Mercedes coming, showing a united front to a city in the middle of a crime crisis. And I believe you have a world-class Super Bowl Vince Lombardi championship team sitting on this stage tonight. The person continues to show time and time again that they don't want to follow the law, that they want to do what they want to do, and they don't want to avail themselves to these low, to the to diversionary programs. You asking to be prosecuted. Noticeably absent, Mayor Brandon Scott. While Baltimore comes off the eighth straight year of surpassing 300 homicides. A big topic and a growing trend in the city, juvenile crime and how to handle kids getting involved in Baltimore's biggest concern. The answer to that has to be no, that we have to begin to hold juveniles accountable. On top of kids and violent crime discussed, guns and how this panel will curb the gun violence in the city. Guns are what's being used to kill and terrorize our community. Now, if you repeat violent offender, i got to ask once again that we invoke what's called the mandatory minimum, and you will receive five years without the possibility of parole for that illegal handgun. Bates turning to his federal prosecutor partner. Call my friend over here and asking him and the U.S. Attorney's Office to take your case so you can get a significant amount of jail time. And U.S. Attorney Barron says his office is ready for the challenge. We're uh, lowering our criteria for taking cases. We're trying to take as many gun cases and work with the state's attorney's office as possible. Bates and the panel making it clear their goal is to get illegal guns and the people pulling the trigger off the street. <laughs> Talking tough on crime, holding people accountable together, seemingly all on the same page. So, Mackenzie, there was a lot of talk about partnerships between these leaders, and Commissioner Michael Harrison did make it clear that he's happy with the new direction. Can you speak more to that? 
Yeah, absolutely. Commissioner Harrison said he, he is, in fact, very excited about the new partners that he has in this crime fight. Commissioner Harrison talking directly and specifically about some of the previous policies under the former administration, Marilyn Mosby. The commissioner says the end, as well as the other panelists, talked about what has and hasn't worked. And Commissioner Harrison really talked about what has been whispered and subtly discussed around the city for over a year when it comes to Mosby's policies. Paramount that we have not just partnerships, but good partnerships. Because every partner is not a good partner. But we have to have good partnerships. When I say partnerships, I am talking about unfettered access to all the information and all the decisions that are made in each of the agencies. I, I'm just too excited to be here with all of our partners to talk about how we together with you go out and make it better. We're going to see that our work has meaning. The commissioner really kept coming back to the importance of having that relationship and being able to call up those partners and be able to get information that's necessary and also talk about what's working and what's not working and being able to craft course corrections if necessary. Kai? You know, Mackenzie, it's funny, as I listen to the commissioner, it really sounds like he's making a point uh, not to operate. He doesn't want everybody operating in silos, right? And it sounds like, in his opinion, he believes that's what's being done or has been done in the past in Baltimore. Uh, Ivan Bates, for his part, kind of doubled down on how he's not going to follow his predecessor's footsteps uh, when it comes to prosecution, especially those open-air drug markets. Fox 45 has had a lot of video about that. Tell me about his, his, his discussion towards that end. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Breaking down those silos and really communicating with everyone involved because everyone should be on the same page about addressing the violent crime. And when it comes to the open air drug markets, we know that it has been an issue we have heard time and time again from community residents all across the city about their concerns about those open air drug markets. You mentioned we have seen captured some video of what appears to be some of the open air drug markets. And Ivan Bates says that he will be prosecuting drug possession. That was one of those low level crimes that Marilyn Mosby had decided not to prosecute. So Bates says that that is changing. And Commissioner Harrison says, given that, he's also telling his officers to change the way they're doing their jobs now. But the police work, put together a good case, then they bring it to the state's attorney's office and it falls apart. Then they're demoralized. But we have to work together. So we know where the hot spot is. Then what we do is we sit together and we talk about a plan. We still make a lot of drug arrests. And we go after and make arrests of drug dealers all the time. Persons who are just in possession of drugs has been one of the crimes that has not been prosecuted. So we had to adjust policy on how we go about catching drug dealers if we're not arresting the drug people who are in possession of it. So while Mayor Brandon Scott was not in attendance for tonight's town hall, there was another familiar face in the audience who also answered some questions. We'll take a look at that coming up in our next half hour. Live in Baltimore, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. Mackenzie, thank you for that report. And as Mackenzie mentioned, one of those open air drug markets happened at the Edmondson Village Shopping Center. Fox 45 News caught video of a drug market there. Uh, just yesterday, five Edmondson Westside High School students were shot in the parking lot of that shopping center near Popeyes. One student tragically was killed. Ivan Bates addressed that shooting during the town hall. As of yesterday, you have high school students on lunch break and someone with a gun shoots and kills them, takes that life. We have to do something because enough is enough. Well, this is what we know about the case and the shooting right now. Former city prosecutor Theru Vignaraj is acting as an advocate for 16-year-old Deontay Dorsey's family. They're demanding police take this case as seriously as they would if the shooting happened in Canton or Federal Hill. As for the other four victims, Vignaraj says one of them is still fighting for his life while the others are recovering. Two suspects in the shooting are still on the run tonight. Police are asking anybody with any information on what happened yesterday to give them a call. The shooting happened outside of a Popeye's restaurant. Now, that restaurant has a sign posted saying it won't serve students between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. The mayor is putting responsibility on business owners at the Edmondson Shopping Center, doubling down on that today.
to what we have been doing. We're trying to get that shopping center and we're close to doing that in the hands of ownership that actually cares about that community and wants to invest in that community to the tune where we announced that we're gonna, the new owner is going to get a significant amount of money, $8 million from the city to help rehabilitate that shopping center that has looked that way since Senator McCray was living in that neighborhood. Well, tonight we are taking a closer look at the mayor placing blame on business owners, some of it at least for that deadly shooting. Fox 45's Keith Daniels joins us for that part of the story tonight. Keith. Well, Mary, Baltimore City school officials say they do require students to stay on campus during school hours. They say it's the responsibility of school administration of the school of the school's administration to enforce those rules, but they do rely on the community to help with support. And tonight, the mayor looking at others for their role in the shooting of those students. Not long after the deadly shooting of 16-year-old Deontay Dorsey and the wounding of four of his schoolmates Wednesday, some city leaders were quick to point fingers at the businesses at Emerson Village Shopping Center for selling to students and minors during the school day. We've been fighting for years to get this shopping center in the hands of a better owner. This Mayor Brandon right. Scott openly criticizing the restaurant where the students reportedly had gone for lunch just moments before the midday gun violence. This Popeyes has been cited before for selling to minors and students during the daytime. This is something that shouldn't happen because those young people wouldn't be here if they knew they couldn't buy something from this place. But longtime community activist Kenji Scott. This is him. This is his failure to keep the city safe. Says it's not the restaurant, but the mayor who ultimately should be held accountable for what happened. The people who did this felt they could get away with it. And the reason why they felt they can get away with it, because the mayor has failed to keep the city safe. Who's responsible for the 15% that he said that we would have a 15% reduction in homicides every year while he's mad? We haven't seen that. The outrage over the shooting also seen Wednesday among community members who confronted Councilman Christopher Burnett, who represents the area. Constituents demanding accountability. Our children is dying. Sir, and what are you doing about it? Y'all sitting in the office doing it. And what are you doing about it? Yo, yeah, what are you going to do? What you got to do? I've been in every single one of these stores. I've been in every one of these stores. Sir, what are you doing? But as the investigation continues and the blame game ongoing, with the mayor saying several elements are responsible for this tragedy, for some in the community, the focus is one. We always hear him talking about being a man. When will he man up? and accept the responsibility of his failure to keep the city safe. Well, in a statement released today, Popeyes said, quote, we closely work with local officials and respect their wishes to not serve students during the school day. They went on to say no one from Popeyes was involved in that shooting. We're live tonight, Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. Okay, thank you. Baltimore City does have an ordinance dictating daytime curfews for children. It states no minor under the age of 16 may remain in or about any public establishment between 7.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. on any day which the minor is required to be in school. However, all five victims of yesterday's shooting were at least 16 years old, so the ordinance does not apply to them. That brings us to our question of the day. Are city leaders tone deaf for putting the blame for this week's shooting on restaurants serving kids during the school day? So far, 100% of those who voted say yes. You can make your voice heard by going to foxbaltimore.com slash vote. In Keith's report, you also heard Kenji Scott reference Mayor Brandon Scott's campaign promise to reduce homicides by 15% each year he was in office. Now, he did fall short the first two years. If he does reach that goal this year, there would still be more than 280 murders. In a New Year's message to the city, Mayor Scott now sets a goal of reducing non-fatal shootings by 10%. That would equate to 619 shootings or fewer. Fox 45 News will keep you track of the progress. I'm Kai Jackson. Thank you for watching. Here's another video to watch. Also, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel.